I'm fascinated with the effects you can have by using different hard colours on a property. And by hard colour, I mean the paint on the doors, the windows, the water butts, the furniture, the pots. If you choose an interesting colour, you can take it through the whole garden and it makes such impact. And if you've got a winter, on a winter's day like today, the thing that really zings out is the hard colour. And I think when you're choosing a hard colour for your house, and that's as opposed to ephemeral soft colour you get from plants, when you're choosing the hard colour, I think if you play safe, you're never going to get the same impact as if you go a bit out of the box. I think you can be really adventurous and that way you can really affect the atmosphere, the feel and the whole character of a property. And when you take the colour through from the doors and you take it through on the windows, the windows especially, they, they really are the eyes of the house. They give it character. And so the colour that you choose for them means they can either punch out or they can recede and, and it affects the way you perceive them totally. Now I've just changed the whole hard colour of the building. I haven't repainted it probably in 12, 13 years. And when we bought it 30 years ago, it was bright spanking white. Now they didn't have white paint um, after, really before the 20th century. So that was totally out of character. What a house would normally have is it might have a nice colour on the front door or the doors, but the windows would be just grey because the pigments which they used in paints in those days, as opposed to the colourants which they use now, were very, very expensive. And the grey was a very cheap colour. But today, because colourants are so much cheaper and the cost of the paint compared to the cost of putting it on um, is relatively inexpensive, I think you can take it through everywhere. So when I was choosing what colour to go for, as I said, we start off with bright white and then we went to a sort of pale greeny grey. And then about 12 years later, we went to a lichen, a more stony colour green. And they've always been really nice. They've been quite soft, sympathetic, and they make the windows recede. Whereas bright white makes everything jump out, the, the, the greeny lichen colours make them recede. But for this time, I wanted a bit, bit more adventurous. I wanted to try something different. And I wanted really a sort of Mediterranean French grey colour because I think that works quite nicely with the stone and I think it gives it a completely different sort of character. But even having thought about that, actually choosing the French grey colour is really, really difficult. So I um, spoke to Patrick Barty and he's a paint historian. And so he works on really important buildings, advising on colour, on places like Stowe and, and other eminent buildings. And I love his range of paints. They're really beautiful. They've got these beautiful hand painted colour charts. And he points out that when you use a historic paint like his, they have about five or six colorants in them, as opposed to more uh, modern type paints, they tend to just have three colorants to make them up. And when you get more colorants, like in his paints, the, the paints are more opaque, they're more lively, and they're not as flat as the modern paints, which just have the three colorants. So that's something to consider if you go for a historic paint. I did want that lovely sort of opaque colour with a lot of depth to it. But the problem here is that the repaint interval on a lot of these paints with the more colourant seems to be much less. It's something like six years. And apparently that is the time span when most people will repaint a property about every six years. Now, um, we certainly haven't done that. It's, it's a major job and it, it's lucky. Um, if it's less than 12 or 14 years. So I tend to choose paints that have a very long repaint interval. So um, I got loads of different samples from different places. I brushed them on different doors. So the house looked like it had about 20 different colors on. And sometimes when you look at the initial color chart, you're looking at a tiny block of color on a white background. Um, and that looks so different than when you actually paint a whole gate or a whole door. And that door will look different if it's facing south, east, west or north. Um, it will look different in the different season when it's got green plants against it or when it hasn't. Whenever I go to a house or garden, I say, what colour are you painting the house? 
people are so confused. They just, they really want advice because they don't know which colour to choose. In the end, I went for um, a Zinza paint, which has a good 14 year guarantee for a repaint interval. Um, and Jotun is the other paint that I use a lot, which also has a really long repaint interval of about 12 years. So I went for a, a colour which Zinza made up for me. And brewers at their head office have a spectrometer so they can exactly or near exactly copy a colour from a sheet of paper or from my um, sweatshirt on into a paint. Now, um, if you don't want to do that, there are websites. So if you have a brand of paint that you like, say it's a, a particular brand from say Farrow and Ball, if you go onto epaint.co.uk and you put in um, Maker Farrow and Ball and you put in the colour, it will come up with colour matches of many different paints and it will give them a star rating as to how close they are. And when you're choosing a brand of paint, I think it's really good to actually ask the painter, if, if it's not you, which paints they like working with because different painters have different foibles and like different things. And Ferg, who did ours, um, he found Zinza very good. It dries very quickly. It goes on really well. And what's more, it will go into metal. It will go into plastic. It will stick onto many, many different surfaces. And in the garden situation, when I'm painting water barrels and things like that, that is really useful. So the other thing about hard colour is actually thinking about the mood it evokes and different colour paints have very different characteristics. Blues, bright blues I think are diff difficult in the English light. If you go to the Marigel Gardens in um, Marrakesh then they've got a lot of uh, that brilliant blue paint um, which Yves Saint Laurent used in his garden. And that looks amazing in that bright Moroccan light. But you bring that same colour, and if I put that on my gates here, on a dull winter's day, that would look very bright, and everything around it would look extremely dull, and I just don't think it works. But it, generally, blue is quite a tranquil colour. A lot of the blues are, but it can be quite cold. Greens are very peaceful, very restful colours, but I think certain greens are quite difficult. They clash together. And if you've got a lot of plants in your garden, then if you have lots of clashing greens, that can be difficult. But if I've got a, a shed or a barn that I want to hide, if you use a very sludgy, khaki, olivey green, a dark black green, that really makes it recede. Yellows I like very much. It is a lively colour but it can be aggressive and the bright buttery yellows I think are quite harsh whereas the lemony yellows are lovely on renders and things like that. And if you go to Port Merion in Wales they've got a lot of very bright colours um, that Sir Clough William Ellis made as part of the character of the whole Port Merion village. Um, and he's used a lot of uh, yellows and aquamarine blues and reds. And it is very lively, but it's right by the sea with the different light that you get from the sea. And it does give it a very Mediterranean feel to the whole place. And I think his use of colour with gold leaf has really made that village partly what it is because it's so different. It's really imbued a strong character to it. Something like violets and purples. Um, one garden we did, we did use a, a designer gill violet or purple just on a small stretch of paint. It was on a north wall and it was just to liven it up and it was the transition from the terrace to a very modern kitchen. And I think that worked quite well. But if you're using a lot of a very strong colour and you're being brave, just bear in mind when you do whole flat sheets of it, it really does punch out. Whereas if you put it on trellis, and you just have thin strips of it, you can get away with a lot stronger colours. Then you've got all the fawns or siennas and things like that, and they are much more rustic, much softer colours, maybe not so adventurous. But 
just don't just consider all the palette when you're thinking of redoing your outdoor color and think what you can take it onto apart from the house to pull them all together um, and maybe it's not a, a paint color maybe it's something like acid etching uh, we've got a lot of furniture and arches and things here and we use them on a lot of gardens which are acid etched and this means the metal has been galvanized usually hot dip galvanized and then we actually paint on it afterwards a mordant which is just like a, a a liquid we paint on it and then you wash it off immediately afterwards and it goes a sort of blacky color and then it becomes a sort of it comes very like lead it's a very sort of gray color but with a powdery feel to it and it's got quite a light feel and what I love about it is in the winter if you've got furniture and elements with this powdery leady colour it really bounces light into the garden and of course you never have to do it you do it once and that's it it's done for life and it lasts pretty much forever which in a garden situation where surfaces are uh, feeling all the elements all the year round, to have something with that longevity is a real bonus. The other thing when you're choosing a paint is um, you want to choose whether you want it gloss, you want it matte or you want it eggshell. Now I was going to do the whole lot in eggshell and the reason I was going to do it in eggshell is because everybody says that when you've got eggshell outside um, dirt doesn't stick to it so much whereas if you've got sand or soil blowing around and things sticking on it it's, it will just throw them off much better than a matte colour. A gloss with high shine I think is just too much, it looks too modern really. But when I came to order the paint, because of all the problems we had with Covid and supplies, they could only get me matte. So we put on the matte and actually I'm really pleased. I think if it doesn't throw off the dirt so well, so what? I actually prefer the flatter look than the semi-shiny. One of the bravest and most effective use of hard colour is trompe l'oeil. In this garden, we've used a scene from Italy to disguise an eyesore of a building. And I often feature trompe l'oeil. One of my favorite gardens at Chelsea this year was this tiny balcony garden, which used paint effects to create a stunning all year round backdrop. Elsewhere at Chelsea, there were other great examples of brave, hard color. From industrial pipework dripping with molten gold, to outrageous neon pink that would liven up any garden. I think when you go to just try and decide what colour you're going to redo your whole house in, and let's face it, when you redo something dramatically different, it does feel like having a new house. It's a really bold move. You are confused because there are so many different manufacturers. There are so many thousands of different swatches of colour. So so just try and try lots and lots of different colors keep your mind quite open do lots and lots of samples and if it takes you a month trialing out all different colors just go with it just do that be patient because you want to get the right effect but the worst thing in the world i think was would be to be too conservative you know have a bit of fun with it do something a bit different and just make your mark and make your home quite distinctive with the sort of character you really like.